Hello, this is January 5th, 2016 Daily Meta. I'm Michael Nagler here at the Meta Center. Uh, some of you have been responding very nicely to these little conversations and sending us questions. I hope that'll continue because I really would like to make this more interactive. So a question that came in was about my lineage, how I came to nonviolence. It's actually a very useful question and I'm glad it came up. Uh, I was always very averse to violence. For one thing, I was the shortest kid in Midwood High School in Brooklyn, New York, and didn't want there to be a whole lot of violence in my life. But more seriously, I had some kind of an innate aversion, though I was plenty angry, uh, maybe about slightly different things than other people, but quite angry and uh, had no philosophical basis for being against it. We didn't hear much about Gandhi in that era. I remember just seeing the cover of Life magazine covering his funeral, uh, cremation. It looked sort of weird. But I came to Berkeley and uh, in 1966, I met Sri Eknath Ishwaran, who had started the Blue Mountain Center of Meditation, which is still a very flourishing institution to which I belong. I live in the Blue Mountain Center's ashram and I've been practicing meditation since then, since 19. 66 under Ishran's guidance. Now, Ishran had met Gandhi and was deeply, deeply impressed by him. Interestingly enough, uh, Ishran did not become political, so he never joined the Satyagraha. It shows you how huge Gandhi was, what kind of dimensions that man had, that he could affect someone like Ishran, pick him up, change his whole life, change the life course of now thousands of people without having him become a direct disciple or a member of the ashram or a political activist. And through Ishran's eyes, I began to see another Gandhi. And this may sound a little paradoxical, but I saw that Gandhi was much, much greater than I had thought. And uh, as Ishran said, just father of the nation didn't even begin to say it. Uh, I'll say a little bit later on about what I think Gandhi was. Uh, and on the other hand, he was much less inaccessible. He was more accessible than I thought. All I knew about Gandhi, I thought I could never do that. You know, I can't fast for days on end and stuff like that. But to see that he was uh, such a tremendous figure, and yet that he had laid down certain practices and certain disciplines that even an ordinary person like myself could follow that intrigued me to say the very least that really changed the course of my life and at one point uh, uh sri ishran said i'm going to take you out of politics he said to me i'll take you out of politics and when i put you back in you'll be much more effective i had been in the free speech movement at that time uh, and that's exactly what happened uh, i think i found a unique way of expressing something that i've gained through meditation on the one hand and my uh, deep study of Gandhi on the other hand. So maybe I could leave us today to ponder that question. Let's think uh, what kind of being we think Gandhi was, uh, what enabled him to do what he did and have the impact that he had. And uh, we can be talking more about that later on. So please do continue sending us in questions. This is just the kind of conversation we were hoping to have. That's today's Daily Meta. And as the Mahatma said, if you find this interesting, we are all invited to join the experiment.